Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, and welcome to this uh, hearing of the Budget and Finance Committee for Monday, October 1st, 2018. Uh, I'm Paul Krikorian, joined by my colleagues, uh, Council Members Bonin and Blumenfield, and we're ready to begin. Um, we'll begin uh, with our general public comment, um, and uh, Mr. Previn, if you'd like to come up and give your comments on uh, your agenda items and general public comment. Um, so we'll do t two plus one, please. Oh, no, I think you only signed up for the one matter, right? No, it should be two plus one, correct. Two? Yeah. Okay, plus so two plus one, please. Three, but that's okay. Okay, thank Getting you. Getting the hang of it still, Got sorry. It. It's Eric Previn um, from Studio City, and obviously the early part of the agenda has some closed session items. Um, item number one I did note uh, goes back to 2001 which is really uh, hard to believe we're still grappling with that one. Item two is a FIHA, that's Fair Employment and Housing Authority lawsuit. Uh, three is a traffic accident, and it, I think we should all uh, hold our heads down briefly, Blumenfield, uh, for what happened at the last city council meeting with the $5 million settlement regarding the Dockweiler matter, which is just a follow-up to the $9.5 million out at that uh, juncture. So I hope we finally got that squared away. And that is a fishy one, I'm just going to be honest. Item number four is obviously 4215, Carol Sobel and ACLU go after the peddling, hawking, and vending restrictions. Uh, once again, I don't know where we are in that one. And then, of course, uh, item number five is the retention of outside counsel, which I've advised in the past could be a good idea, so I appreciate you're looking at that. In this case, uh, you are looking at that. Um, but I should just tell you that these private counsel, when you do hire them, need to be monitored very carefully. If the county, uh, Lawrence, Beach, Allen, and Choi ran up a $1.6 million bill that I've just unearthed over at Department 82 with Judge Sobel, you're going to see these records are, will blanch uh, the typical resident's mustache. And I would just like to say about your new, I think today it's eight is the new one where you have, uh, nine is the new one where you have two dozen or more liens against uh, property. I'm extremely opposed to that for the following reason. One is because you're shuffling people off into a private setting. I don't believe it meets the fair public hearing standards. And by not allowing them to speak to their council members in a big session of council, there's really no opportunity to then speak out on Channel 35, which, uh, as Herb Wesson and Blumenfield, hashtag Blumenfield's nose, have arranged, is for the public to use our airways to make clear what's going on. So I would ask you, and especially uh, Council Member Martinez, because I noticed I spoke to a member of the public who has an older guy who owns his property. He's on your agenda today. I think it's I, item number I. And the guy should be dealt with probably. He should pay the little fee. The father is older. Hey, general public Cleaned comment. Up, so thank you. And the general public comment. Um, I would just elaborate that I think fair public hearings, I remember uh, very clearly being educated by Dion O'Connell, that when you have a fair public hearing, the council members have to be present, they have to be listening. They can't be focused on anything other than the public speaker or the monitor. So when Charles, bless his heart, is over around the corner uh, having his way with Angelinos who are not well informed, it doesn't feel like it meets that standard. And then when we come back in here, and I know in a moment, Sue, so you're going to play bingo with the various characters and call off all the numbers. And Williams and I, we both jotted them down last meeting, and we almost got the exact same outcome, but he was off by, I was off by one. Sorry, sir, I was off by one. But all I can say is, is that these hearings used to be in the city hall, there's nothing wrong with having them in the city hall. We don't like leaning on people during a homeless crisis, but that means you could make a deal. And Bonin has historically walked over and said, look, we shouldn't penalize this elderly person. Let's just reduce it to the minimum and let's move forward. But we don't do that anymore. Now we want to get the big bucks out of them up here on 10th floor, and that's why I'm here, and I will come back until you change it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Previn. Uh, general public comment is now closed, and public comment on all items other than item number nine. Uh, is now closed. Uh, so with that, members, I propose item seven as a consent candidate for approval, unless members have questions or concerns about that item. Nope. And seeing none, it will be the action of the committee on consent to approve that item. Um, I'd like, I want to note the presence of uh, Council Member O'Farrell, who I saw a moment ago, and um, I'd like to call out of order, item number eight, please. Item number eight is a motion of Farrell Kerkorian relative to a request to the city attorney with assistance of the Bureau of Contract Administration to prepare and present an ordinance directing any prospective contractor with the city of Los Angeles to disclose any contracts or sponsorships with the National Rifle Association. Mr. O'Farrell, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
and colleagues. Uh, thank you for hearing this item on the anniversary of the worst mass shooting in United States history, which happened during an outdoor concert in Las Vegas, October 1st, exactly one year ago today, killing 58 and wounding 489 others. Since the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting in December of 2012, there have been more than 1,600 mass shootings in the United States. So far this year, there have been over 200 mass shootings. The roadblock to gun safety legislation across the United States is the National Rifle Association. Although gun safety legislation has been enacted by some individual states, especially here in California, the NRA's lock on Congress and the Senate is such that no gun safety legislation has been enacted at the federal level since 1994 with the assault weapons ban. That ban expired in 2004. There is a clear distinction between the activities of the NRA leadership and their membership of roughly 5 million. According to a Monmouth poll this past March, 69% of NRA members support stricter gun laws. However, their extremist leadership lobbies for easy access to firearms, no background checks, no ban on bump stocks, no limits on magazine capacity, no regulation of assault weapons, no mandatory training, and no age restrictions. And, according to an NRA spokesperson, free, downloadable 3D guns symbolize freedom, and innovation. The NRA, NRA leadership ramped up their policy agenda of arming teachers everywhere across the country in all schools and college campuses after the mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Florida this past February. The bulk of NRA funding comes in the form of contributions, grants, royalties, and advertising, much of it originating from gun industry sources according to Business Insider magazine. Membership dues haven't funded the bulk of their operations for quite some time. Naturally, they want to put more guns in the hands of more people. They stand to profit from this agenda. The NRA leadership promotes extremist propaganda and violence against the media, along with other conspiratorial rantings from various hosts and guests on their broadcast channel, NRA TV. Mr. Chair and colleagues, we currently and righteously have disclosure ordinances in place with our Bureau of Contract Administration for border wall contracting and for those businesses that have a history of investment or profits from slavery prior to 1865. The outsized role the NRA plays with their reckless and destructive agenda of guns everywhere without regulation of any kind anywhere results in incalculable losses of life, the destruction of families, and devastating financial costs that we all collectively pay for. I'm calling for the same transparency with regard to the activities of the NRA in relation to any entities that we do business with. I hope to have your support in this effort, and I'm certain that the residents of Los Angeles would be interested in having this information available to them as well, and I would direct your attention to the motion that was introduced on September 21st. Uh, and I thank you for hearing this so quickly, Mr. Chair, uh, and I, I hope we can act promptly as well. Thank you very much, Mr. O'Farrell, and um, I'm proud to have seconded your motion. Uh, strongly support it. Thank you for the work that you've done on this. Um, I would have proposed it for consent approval, but I don't know if members have uh, questions or concerns at this point or comments. All right. I'll, I'll, so I'll make a comment and a question. Sure. sure. Uh, I mean, first off, I think it's great and I appreciate you taking the leadership on this. Uh, and it's extremely important that we do everything we can to rein in uh, sort of the rampant uh, guns that are in this, this country. I, I do uh, ask a question of, of enforcement, and this more will be once we get the City right. Attorney's back of how how we would enforce such um, such a disclosure requirement. The other ordinances that I mentioned are disclosure by affidavit, so it, it would be similar. It'd be under penalty of perjury for not disclosing ties to the NRA that anyone we have a contract with or do business with on a regular basis. And you're right, the details would be daylighted throughout the process of 
of crafting the ordinance. Yeah. I'll spend my time on the details, but uh, I appreciate the, uh, the direction. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Uh, if there is no objection, then it will be the action of the committee to approve the item and to move it forward. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. O'Farrell. Thanks for coming down. Thanks, All right. Um, so for uh, council who are here on our closed sessions, we're going to take item number nine first. Um, and so I want to just explain to the folks who are here to speak on item number nine what our process is uh, for these uh, liens. I'm going to ask first uh, for the Department of Building and Safety to come forward and give a report on all of the items that are listed under item number nine. Um, in some cases, you might already have spoken with uh, one of the gentlemen who are up here. Um, in other cases, they might have received additional information. In yet other cases, payment might already have been received, uh, in which case they're going to report to us changes in the recommendations that are before us, or recommendations for changes. Um, when they've completed their report, I'll invite anyone who still wants to speak, if, if your matter hasn't been resolved by what they uh, tell us, I'll invite you up to speak um, and we'll have an opportunity then to, to hear directly from you. Uh, in some cases, the recommendation of this committee uh, may be to advance the matter to council um, with a certain amount of time being allowed to allow you to have further discussion with LEDBS and your city council member. In other cases, if no one is here to speak on the matter, if it appears not to be something that requires changing, it'll simply advance to council for approval. Um, so I'm going to ask LADBS uh, to speak first, and then we'll kind of walk you through the comment part as we go. So um, okay, the department. Tony Pelias, the Department of Building and Safety. Um, we would like to recommend that the following items be received and filed uh, due to being paid in full. Uh, that would be number 9A. I'm sorry. Let me uh, start over again. It's not 9A. 9C. 9E. Okay, so these are received and files. Uh, for paid in full, yes. Okay, so just for the sake of the audience, as you're giving these, these um, items, if a recommendation is to receive and file an item, that means it dies here. It does not advance, and no lien will be issued. That's what receive and file will mean. So if we approve the recommendation that is be being given to us, and your item is listed as one of the receive and file items, it will not advance to council. So that's, that's I just want to make sure you understand what he's recommending. So 9C, receive and file. 9E. 9L. 9N. 9R, 9S, and 9V. V is in Victor? Victory, yes. Okay. Uh, then the department would like to recommend that the following item be received and filed due to it being owner occupied, and that would be number 9A. Any others? Uh, and uh, lastly, the department would like to recommend that the following items be submitted without recommendation and scheduled with council in four weeks to allow the department to review the documentation submitted. And that would be number 9D, number 9G, number 9H, number 9I, Number 9P. What was that? Number 9P is in Paul. Number 9T. Number 9X. And number 9AD. What was the last one? AD. The last item on number 9. 
Any other changes to recommendations? That's it. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Um, so first we're going to deal with the uh, receive and file matters. Um, Mr. Chair, yes. Richard Williams, City Clerk's Office, would you like me to read those into the record? Um, yeah, what I'd like to do is um, go through them one at a time and c if we have speakers to invite the speaker up. Um, but again, please understand that the recommendation is to receive and file the item, which means it's, it dies here. It does not advance to council. So I, is, I assume that that would be what you would want us to do, um, but you're welcome to come and speak uh, in any event if, if your matter is called as one of the receive and file items. All right, Mr. Williams. Uh, <clears throat> the following are received and filed items. 9C, received and filed in as much as the lien has been paid. 9E, receive and file in as much as the lien has been paid. 9L, receive and file in as much as the lien has been paid. 9N, receive and file in, in as much as the lien has been paid. 9R, receive and file in as much as the lien has been paid. 9S, receive and file in as much as the lien has been paid. 9V, as in Victor, receive and file in as much as the lien has been paid. And 9A, receive and file in as much as the... Um, this is an owner-occupied property, and it is exempt. Okay. So, um, 9A, uh, we have uh, no speakers other than Mr. Previn. As I understand, he already spoke. Right. This guy is in an owner-occupied situation. I, I'm sorry. It's not your turn to speak. Please be quiet. Don't disrupt the meeting. So, if there's no comments on 9A... Uh, 9A will be received and filed. 9B, uh, comment has been satisfied. If I'm sorry, 9B, uh, 9C is next. 9C, um, comment has been satisfied, unless there's anybody here who didn't sign up who wants to speak on 9C. If there's no objection, it'll be the action of the committee to receive and file item 9C. 9E, comment has been satisfied. If there's no objection and no one wishing to speak on 9E, 9E will be received and filed. 9L, 9L was on your list, Mr. Williams, is that right? That is correct. 9L, okay. And comments been satisfied on that one. If there's no objection, it'll be the action of the committee to receive and file that matter. 9N. I, it does not appear that I have a card on 9N. Was anybody here wishing to speak on 9N? Okay. Then if there's no objection, it'll be the action of the committee to receive and file 9N. No. 9R. Again, I have no card on 9R. Is there anybody wishing to speak on that matter? Okay, seeing none, if there's no objection, it'll be the action of the committee to receive and file that matter. 9S. Comment has been satisfied on 9S. If there's no, no one here to speak on 9S uh, and there's no objection, it'll be the action of the committee to receive and file 9S. 9V, I have no cards. So if there's no one wishing to speak on 9V and no objection, it'll be the action of the committee to receive and file that matter. All right. Is that it, Mr. Williams, for receiving yes, files? that's all. Okay. All right. Now, um, we'll go ahead and uh, go in order on the remainder then. So 9B, um, 
Amparo Ortega, if you'd like to come on up and, and speak, is um, Amparo Ortega, come on up. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, we're here um, to see um, if we could have any options to um, have a do payments so they won't put a lien on the house. Okay. Um, so have you had a chance to speak yet with, with the gentleman from Building and Safety? Yes. Okay. Um, and have you had a chance to speak with Council Member Rue yet, your council member? No. Okay. So, um, first, is there was there any comment? It sounds like it's just a matter of ability to pay. Any comments from the department? Yeah. Um, what I can. My name is Charles Caribana from Building and Safety. What I can say is uh, we've talked to them. The property looks to be owner occupied. So we didn't give them documentation, but we'll give them documentation to have them send us on occupancy information. And in that case, we'll need to, um, for council to offer them four weeks continuation, okay. or they give us the documents. So you, it is owner occupied? It may be, we, they have to Maybe. prove that okay. it's owner occupied. We'll okay. give so, them the documents to so prove. Do you understand that? So, so what we'll do, if, it's, uh, if there's no objection from the committee, is we'll advance this forward without a recommendation from this committee. It won't be heard by council for four weeks. And that'll give you four weeks to be able to provide the documentation that the property is owned and occupied by the same person. And if you can provide that then to building and safety, they'll be able to make a, a different recommendation perhaps at the time of council. But I would also suggest that in the interim, as you provide that documentation to them, talk to your council member's office. Your council member is David Rue, and um, his office is on the fourth floor of this building. So when you leave here today, if you want, you can go straight down there and, um, and talk to somebody from his office, or I can give you the phone number if you have a pen to take it down. Quick correction, Council, council Member. It looks like their property is 9P, P like Paul, not B, like boy. It's 9P. 9P as a boy? You're 9P. Oh, 9P. Okay, I'm sorry, was the address? 2110 North Beachwood? No, it's 1250. Uh, okay, all right. Well, I'll call you in a little bit then, if you could. But, okay. So, sorry about that. You know what? Just stay where you are. Okay. Stay where you are. So that's 9P. We'll go ahead and conclude 9P as long as we have it. So um, your council member is? Current. Uh, council member Price, Current Price. And uh, the phone number is area code 213-473. Seven zero zero nine. So you can either call or just go down to the fourth floor right now and see if you can make an appointment to talk okay. to him. But the recommendation still will be to continue this matter forward to council uh, for four weeks and uh, without a recommendation of this committee. And that'll give you enough time to work out whatever you can work out with council member Price in the department as far as a payment plan. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Without objection. That will be the action of the committee. All right, so let's come back then to, was there anybody on 9B? B is in boy. That's 5345 North Biloxi. Okay. Um, there's no one here to speak on number B. Okay, then uh, members, if there's no objection, it'll be the action of the committee to approve the recommendation of the department. Okay, so that'll bring up 9D. That's 2110 North Beachwood. Is that you, ma'am? All right, come on up. And are you Ms. Morgan? Okay. Welcome. I'm really scared. I'm sorry. It's okay. Take your time. Take your time. I am so frightened that anybody can call Building and Safety 
report you for anything they want, and it doesn't matter what it is, and they come out and charge you. I don't have a lot of money. I live on my disability, and I'm doing the best I can. I'm, but I have been very distressed in noticing that I have been discriminated against, and you say that's not possible, but I have a picture, and I would like somebody to please look, that they said that my fence was too high, and regular size and much larger. And as you can see, my fence, which will be on the right, is not even a third of the height of the fence 20 feet away from me. No matter how many times that property has been reported, they have never been cited. I've been cited 97 times, apparently. Excuse me, I'm sorry. No, it's all right. I, I'm so frustrated I, and frightened. OK. So I don't want you to be frightened, first of all. And I'm so, alone. You know, okay. It's very, very easy to be. OK. Have you uh, had a discussion with the gentleman from yes, they were Building very Safety? Nice. Okay. So, um, what they are recommending is that we advance this to council without a recommendation of this committee to allow you enough time to be able to talk with your council member, provide any other information they may need to make an additional recommendation. But I would really recommend talking to your council member because, uh, you know, a lot of times, especially with uh, hillside homes, fence height issues um, become very controversial, and sometimes council members can work out resolution of those matters. Um, it, sometimes it's a matter of how it's measured. There, there are a lot of different factors that can come into play um, that you really need somebody from your council office to take the time to walk through and figure this out with you. So I would suggest um, that you, your council member is Council Member Rue. Yes, yes, and so and I've been there a couple of times. Okay, okay. Well, um, w what I'm going to suggest is that the committee advance this to council without recommendation. It will not be heard in council for at least four weeks, and that will give you more time to be able to talk to Council Member Rue, and then Council Member Rue can make a recommendation if he wishes at the time of the council. You Maybe. know, this is my home. Do you need? Proof that it is my home. That well, I, the, yes, and if, if what do you need, please? The department will be able to provide you with the forms and information necessary to be able to provide them with the documentation. They, they gave me a form, but it doesn't say provide. You know, I can show you my mortgage. I can show you. So I don't know what it. it, it I, I don't want to. We can't no, really do understand. the back and forth here. But I am going to ask you to today before you leave. Charles, sit down with Charles. And I'd ask you gentlemen to walk through with her exactly what documentation she needs to provide, by when, to whom, so that it's clear to her, crystal clear, what she needs to provide. So I'd ask that you do that today. And then um, in the me meantime, I would ask that you, I would suggest that you speak to Council Member Rue's office as well and provide the same documentation to their office as well. Okay. So. Uh, members, if there's no objection to so proceeding, we'll go ahead and advance that to council without recommendation. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Item 9F, is there anybody here to speak about West Barrows Drive? Okay. Seeing none, the, um, if there's no objection, it'll be the action of the committee to approve the department's recommendation. Uh, 9G, 11902 West Peoria Street. Uh, Mr. Rubin? Okay. So, um, again, the, the recommendation of the department is to advance this to the council four weeks from now without a recommendation of this committee, which would allow you more time to talk with them and your council member. But feel free to take, uh, take a minute to tell us uh, your situation if you wish. Well, yes, we had this issue. Um, we uh, had some uh, materials and uh, tools on the property. I thought it would be a good idea putting a container over there and put the materials, construction materials, and 
tools. We at work, we work on construction, and but that wasn't approved. The container, okay. So we had to remove it, and so we we just needed some time to uh, pay the fees. Okay. Um, so then, have you had a chance to discuss it with the department? Mm, yes. Okay. So I, that is, I assume, why they've asked us to advance it without a recommendation, yes. and unless members have uh, any concerns about doing so, that is what I would recommend. Your council member is council member Nuri Martinez for the property, and uh, she also is on the fourth floor. So if you'd like to have a conversation with someone from her office, they can evaluate your case more thoroughly and make a determination of a course of action prior to council. What is her name, I'm sorry? Nuri, Nuri? Martinez. And her phone number is 213-473-7006. And her office is on the fourth floor, and she also has an office in the Van Nuys City Hall in Van Nuys. Okay. Okay, but if you want to do that today um, so they can get started on it, that, that's what I would suggest. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so if there's no objection, members, it'll be the action of the committee to advance item G without recommendation. <coughs> All right, that brings up item number H, 9H, 15235 West Lorne Street. Sir, is it Mr. Piat? Sorry? He's, he's right here in the, in the audience, John Piat. Okay. I'm just I'm speaking for him. Okay. I live in the property as well. It's an owner, owner, uh, dwelling. He, oh. he lives here as well. Okay. Who's John, the owner? You or John him? Hyatt. Okay. John, come on up here. Actually, just hold his time. In fact, can you start it over? Sure. Thanks. Okay. Go right, go right ahead. Um, there's a couple things on this. Um, we don't have a, I don't have a problem with paying them, okay, but... Um, but they came out, I don't know if you, I tried to talk to this gentleman over here, but I couldn't really understand what he was saying to me. Um, maybe this is his, his, his uh, dialect or whatever it is. But anyways, um, um, they came out a first time and I complied when they came out. And then they came out three, three months later and they, they, I didn't know this. I thought it was a compliance letter they were sending to me, but it was another non another issue they had with me. But I didn't even know that that they were sending me a new complaint. And then, then they came out just recently, and, and they, they said because they had an open case, and they, they gave me a month to, fi to fix all the problems, and, and I did that. Because I didn't know about the second problem. You understand? Or no? Okay, and I'm sorry, sir, but what's your name and what's your connection to the property? Um, my, my name's uh, Rod Mashad. Okay. And, uh, and I, I live with, with John. Okay. He's, not, he's out of work right now, so I pretty much okay. pay the bills. Okay, but, but it's your contention that it's owner-occupied. Yeah, Mr. Piat lives in the... Okay. I'll, I'll, so we'll is, submit the paperwork that we have to. Terrific. With. So is that why the recommendation was to continue the matter or advance the matter without recommendation? Yeah, yes, absolutely. It's um, owner-occupied. It's, it's, uh, it's owned by the gentleman on the other side. So we give them documentation to give us the documents we need to have approved so okay. they can prove that they, he lives in the house and owns it okay. and it's exempt from lien. But I still owe the $4,995. Okay. So, so the, what you need to do is provide the evidence that it is in fact an owner-occupied property to the department. Right. And I, if you're prepared to do that today, that's great. But the recommend, their recommendation was that we advance it to council without a recommendation of this committee one way or the other. And then that gives you four weeks to be able to get this part assessed. Well, he accepted determined. without. Oh, I don't have the utility bill with me, but um, um, I, I have all the other information he needs for it. But um, what about? I don't know if I talked to him about it or not. The second time they came out, that I didn't. I didn't know that they came out to the property and inspect. They didn't ever knock on the door and, and ask for any. Told us they were there or anything else. I thought it was the same, I thought it was a compliance uh, paperwork. 
So the first order of business will be to walk them through that so that they understand the history of this from your perspective okay. and they can answer questions that you may have about that. Okay. The second order of business that I recommend to you is speak with Councilmember Martinez who represents your property okay. and uh, I gave her, she's on the fourth I, floor. I'll stop there. Talk. Yeah, so you can just stop by on the fourth floor and talk with her staff about okay. it and show them your documentation. They may be able to help you as okay, well. Okay, so what are we doing four weeks then? If we mail in the paperwork to, to the department, yeah. We're so in back here in four weeks? No, to the city council. So the, it will be set for agendized for a city council meeting uh, in four weeks. No, no more paperwork. Um, do, do you guys send a separate notice for the council meeting or? Do no, we? No, no, we don't. What we do, we give them the council fire number and they can follow it on the internet. So they okay. can follow the case on the internet. Okay. We don't send any documentation, additional documentation to them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. That's not the best method um, because most people don't know how to use our council file system. Um, it's really important that you talk to your council member and then your council member can you know, follow up with you and if it is necessary for you to come back to council, then you know, that, that's something that you can determine with her staff. Okay. Okay? All right. That's, that's the best suggestion I would have for you. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Is there any objection to advancing without recommendation? Okay. That will be the action of the committee. Item number I, 8515 North Orion. Mr. Aldana? Uh, I'm uh, his son. Oh, okay. He's disabled and unable to make it today. Okay, great. And I'm hoping to speak to you guys regarding the matter. Okay, very good. Please, I've already spoke please. to the gentleman uh, for arrangements for uh, filing all the necessary paperwork that's missing. Okay. Um, my issue is if they, um, if it's, uh, if uh, the complaint was satisfied, um, does the, uh, could we, uh, uh, could we go with the original fee versus the, the fee with all the penalties and all that? And I researched it, and it seems like there's no way to make that work and I'm trying to do so, I have to get to this point to 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 make it happen or what yeah so the way that could happen is if you present your file and your documentation and your case to your council member uh, who again is is Nuri Martinez okay. um, if you show that to her and her staff explain the situation to her it is possible for the council member to make a motion in council when this matter moves forward to council if they choose to if they look at the file and think that it's um, uh, an appropriate resolution they can make a motion of any nature to, to change uh, change this recommendation in whatever way they see as appropriate and then it'll be up to the council to uh, either vote on that recommendation or not. So okay. the f that's why I'm recommending that everyone speak to their council members because th that really is up to the council member for the property and their staff to make that kind of a motion if they feel it's appropriate. So if you've already provided whatever documentation and evidence you have to the department, the next step should really be to speak with Ms. Martinez in her office. Sounds good. Okay. So we'll go ahead and move this forward without a recommendation for four weeks to give you sufficient time to be able to do that with the council members. Thank you very much. Okay. If there's no objection, that will be the action of the committee. Okay. Uh, and there's no one here on item uh, J, 17620 West Welby Way. Okay. Seeing none, members, if there's no objection, it will be the action of the committee to approve uh, the recommendation. Item K, 10325 West Foothill Boulevard. Anybody here? Seeing none, uh, members, if there's no objection, it'll be the action of the committee to approve the recommendation. Item M, 1435 West 53rd Street. Is there anyone here to speak on that? Seeing none, members, if there's no objection, it'll be the action of the committee to approve the recommendation. Item O, 4022 West Don Diablo Drive. Anybody here? Seeing none, uh, members, if there's no objection, it'll be the action of the committee to approve the recommendation. Item Q, 861 East Vernon Avenue, uh, or 859 East Vernon Avenue. Is anybody here on that property? 
Seeing none, members, if there's no objection, it'll be the action of the committee to approve the recommendation. That brings us to item T, 2231 Southwest Boulevard. Is anyone here on that matter? Okay, there is none, and the recommendation was to advance <coughs> that item without recommendation of the committee to be heard in council in four weeks. And if there's no objection, that will be the action of the committee. Item U, eight, I'm sorry, 3831 South Wheeland Avenue or Welland Avenue. Is there anyone here speaking on that? Seeing none, uh, members without objection, it will be the action of the committee to approve the recommendation. Item W, bless you by the way, item W17933 um, West Parthenia Street. Is anybody here to speak on that property? Seeing none, members, it will be the action of the committee without objection to approve the recommendation. Item 9X16440 West Index Street. Ms. Raker? Okay, come right on up. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, this is my sister, Monica Lewis. She is owner occupied the premises. Okay. And the reason we're, we came today is because. One question I personally have is my nephew, Mr. Norman Lewis, went to court and they were under the pre premises that when the court case was closed and the file was closed that everything was dismissed. And my sister did make a payment of 300 and I believe 50 some dollars and I'm not, sh I'm not sure when that date is. I did call and they uh, building and safety and they gave me that information but I we just wanted the council to know she did not intentionally not make this payment okay She's been in and out of the hospital like right here this is her medical records from last year and she's been in and out of the hospital probably three to four times this year so has my nephew she until she got this letter posted on her front door and a certified letter had no idea that okay. had been sent in letters to her house. And she owns the property. She owns the I property, yes. Okay. Okay. So I, I have called the post office to report this to them, so they're not sure why the the letters never came. Oh, I see. But here, this was closed like November second of last year, and again, okay. My nephew thought the whole case was closed at that point. She would like to know if she could make some kind of arrangements to make payments, although she lives on a very, very fixed budget. Okay. Um, might be able to do better than that, depending on the documentation. So, um, yes, yeah. Charles. Yeah, in this case, uh, again, we, we talked to them. The property is owner occupied. She lives in the house, and it's exempt from lien if they can't prove that it's owner occupied. Yeah. So, they need to give us a documentation. And also, they paid, they are right, they paid the, the basic charge, the CVIF, but they, they didn't pay the late fee. Okay. So, we are trying to get them charged for the late Okay. So, the matter that's before us is whether or not to issue the lien. And if it's an owner occupied property, and you can demonstrate that to the department, a lien will not issue. And if you can demonstrate to them that you've already made the payments, then that would be you know, shown as being paid if, you, if we can establish that that was in fact done. So um, you'll want to discuss those matters and provide the documentation for those two things, the payment and the fact that it was owner-occupied okay. to these gentlemen that would be business item number one for you. Business item number two is unless they can, well, in fact, regardless, you should talk to your council member. And that would be Mitchell Englander. Mr. Who? Mr. Englander. Um, and E-N-G-L-A-N-D-E-R. E -E First name Mitchell. And his phone number is 213. Four seven three seven zero one two. 
and his office is on the fourth floor. If, when you leave here, if you'd like to stop by and just let them know that you were here. I don't think he's here today, but you can speak with his staff. Okay? So what we'll do then, in the meantime, as you're pursuing those issues of documentation, we'll advance this to council without a recommendation of this committee. Um, four weeks from now, um, it will come up on the council's agenda. So if, if you've been able to resolve it with your council member and with the department, then we'll be able to, to deal with that at the time that it comes forward. But it's important that you get that documentation to them so that they can make the appropriate uh, remedy to that. Okay? So if there's no objection, members, that will be the action of the committee. Thank you. Thank you so very much. My pleasure. Thank you. Uh, that brings us to item Y, 10615 North Gothic Avenue. Do we have anybody on that matter? Seeing none, members, if there's no objection, it'll be the action of the committee to approve the recommendation. Item Z is 548 East Redfield Avenue. Any speakers on that? Hi. Come on forward. Hello. Hi. Uh, one second. Um, Okay, it looks, I don't have you, have a speaker signed up. Did you go to the podium to sign up? To the, in the back? Other room? You, there was no, 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 you can do it later. Oh, you can do it later. Okay. It's fine. Okay. Just, if you could just tell I'm, me your name, please. I'm, I'm the owner. My name is Victoria Burdett. Okay. And I bought this property in 1999 under the Homeworks First Time Home Buyer for Low Income through the City of Los Angeles. And the structure they're talking about is a carport, and they said that there was no permit pulled for it. Um, this was done under the city. The city actually paid the contractors and referred me to those contractors in 1999. And so if there was a mistake made, I don't know why I'm getting a, a lien. And also this was 19, September 1999. And the first I heard of this was 2015. So um, now I'm a widow, and so I don't really know what to do. As of, okay. as of now, and I've tried several times calling over the last two years, uh, building inspectors, and uh -huh. no one seems to know what's going on. And also, there, when it shows who the deed of a trust is for, it's not showing on the document they sent me, the HomeWorks First Time Home Buyer, because the City of Los Angeles holds the second mortgage deed grant, and it's not showing. Okay. But I have all of that. When I tried to refinance, they showed it on there, so I don't know what's happening. Anyway, okay. but I just need um, help to figure out what to do or take it down and put something acceptable. And you're the owner of the property? Yes. And you live there? Yes. Okay. So what we'll do then, uh, unless building and safety, you have a reason not to proceed with the four-week No, it's okay. We can proceed. Is that what you'd prefer? Okay. Yeah. Members, if there's no objection, what, what we'll do is we'll advance because we can't assess the documentation that you have there as we sit here right now. Right. So what we'll do is ask you to, to talk to these gentlemen, okay. show them the documentation that you have, allow them the time to do research within their files to determine what, what an appropriate course of action is. Okay. And then you should also speak with your council members. I've told the other folks who okay. are coming up. So your council member is Jose Wizar, okay. and... Um, do I need to speak to him? You don't need to speak. Well, start by speaking to his, his staff and see what they recommend to you. That would be my suggestion. Okay. So if we move this forward without recommendation, it won't be heard by council okay. until at least four weeks from now. And that will give you time to talk to the council office and to talk to building and safety, present whatever documentation you have to be able to demonstrate that you are the owner and you are occupying the property, okay. and the other these sort of historical issues that you've described, which are peculiar right. um, and if you have if you have some documentation yeah. to be able to talk okay. through with them they'll okay. be able to handle it so right. yeah I was it's Jose Wizar. I was if, just interested if they have grant programs to up, to bring things up to code that I might apply for uh, I'd ask that in the past there in fact are okay. and you should speak with the council office about the that council office. yeah okay. so let me leave you with his phone number it's 213 mm -hmm. 473 7014. Okay. All right, thank okay. You. So if there's no objection, members, it'll be the action of the committee to advance item Z without recommendation oh. for hearing in council um, four weeks or more from now. Uh, pardon, Mr. Chair. I thought yes. we were on item Y. I'm s sorry, ma'am. Maybe I 
maybe I gave you the wrong, uh, what was your address again? 548 Redfield. 548 Nine. East Redfield. Oh. Yes, yeah, so that's Z. Okay. Thank you. All right, that brings us to 9AA. Is there anyone here on 9AA, which is 4322 North Garden Homes Avenue? Okay, seeing none, if there's no objection, it'll be the action of the committee to approve the recommendation. Item AB, 211 North Indiana Street. Anybody here on that matter? North Indiana Street. Seeing none, if there's no objection, it'll be the action of the committee to approve the recommendation. Item AC, 757 West 167th Street. Anybody here on that matter? No, if there's no objection, uh, members, it'll be the action of the committee to approve the recommendation. And then our final matter is 2227 South Alma Street, item AD. Sir? Mr. Bodnar? Yes. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Uh, I met with a supervisor from the department in August, explained the situation of my claim, he explained to me that he believed I had a very valid case and that he was going to schedule me a hearing with the department, told me to take photos, get all my information ready, and that he would schedule me a date. Okay. I got scheduled a date on October 1st. He called me twice to follow up, and when I got here, I'm in this meeting, not with the department like I was told. So I am the owner. I've been the owner for 25 and a half years. I occupy the house the entire time. Okay. So they told me to come here and request an extension to try to figure out what's going on. You, I, if there's no objection, members, you got it. In fact, it won't be an extension. The way we do this is um, we'll advance it to council, but without recommendation of the committee. But it won't be heard for another four weeks. So that gives you four weeks to be able to, in, you can do it before you leave here today. These are the gentlemen. Yes, I spoke who, to them before, and they okay. gave me some documents to fill out and fax to them. So Great. we've started that process. but. That is just to get past this issue. It still doesn't do anything with me getting together with the department and having... Well, they are the department. Yes. These are the two still haven't got senior together. representatives from the department, number one. Number two, you should also have a conversation with your council office. Joe Baschino, yes. Yes. I understand that. Yeah. I'm going to do that right now. Terrific. So um, then four, at least four weeks from now, the matter will be set in council. Um, so that will give you a month to be able to work out documentation and other issues with the department and with your council office. Appreciate that. Okay. Thanks, sir. Thank you very much. Any objection to proceeding with, as stated, members? Okay. Then without objection, it will be the action of the committee to advance item AD without recommendation. All right. Mr. Williams, I believe that completes item number nine. Uh, yes, it does. And if we could just go back to item Y, I just wanted to make sure that I have the correct disposition. Nine Y. Um, okay, was there anyone here to speak on item nine Y? I don't have a card on nine Y, and there was no suggestion for a change on nine Y, so it was the action of the committee to approve the department's recommendation. All right, anything else on item nine? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Very good. Then that completes our uh, open session items. Thank you all very much for participating uh, and coming down. We will proceed now into closed session. We have other open session items later, right? Uh, no, I think we finished everything. Yeah. The yeah. VA ones. Hmm? The Okay. Oh. Okay. And Mr. Chair, uh, Richard Williams, City Clerk, for uh, item number five, we do need to announce the action on that matter. Oh. Okay. Oh, would you like me to go ahead yes, and do that? Yes, if you would, please. On item number five, city attorney report relative to the retention of Sanders Roberts LLP as outside counsel. The committee recommended to approve the city attorney recommendation 
to approve the recommend to approve the report. All right, um, and before we go to item number six, uh, ma'am, I understand you are here on item 9T, which is 2231 Southwest Boulevard. Is that your property? So um, just so you know, uh, the committee already took the action of advancing this one to council without a recommendation. So the point of that would be to allow you to have enough time to talk with building and safety and to talk to your council member. Um, but I'm happy to, if there's no objection, um, I'd be happy to open up comment on this again for you to speak, but you don't need to because it's moving forward to council four weeks from now. So if you would like, I would recommend that you speak to building and safety and your council member, who's council member Wesson, um, and you can either visit his office today um, or you can give him a call, I can give you his phone number, and, and that would be the best, my best recommendation for how you would want to proceed. Okay. okay, great. And, uh, I thought that the, the information I got was that I was supposed to have been on Figueroa at room 11 Okay. And I ran in circles for an hour, and when I got over here, I'm like, so where do I park? Yeah. And it was kind of a nightmare, but I'm here, and thank you very much. Okay. Yes, to Mr. Wesson's office. All right, and you as well. Thank you. All right, that brings up item number six. Item number six is the California Environmental Quality Act for CEQA analysis and category exemption from CEQA pursuant to Art 19, sections 15301, class 1H, 15303, class 3C, and 15304, class 4A, B, and E as well as City of Los Angeles CEQA guidelines, Article 3, Section 1, Class 1, 8, 12, and Class 4, 1, 3, 6. And a motion, Bonner and Weezer, Corian, relative to consideration of the West Los Angeles campus site of the United States Department of Veteran Affairs, or VA, to be developed as a suitable location for bridge housing. An instruction to the City Administrative Officer to execute a memorandum of understanding and agreements with the County of Los Angeles and the VA, outlining the various roles and responsibilities of each entity involved, and approval to establish funding for the bridge housing facility at the West Los Angeles VA campus site. This item has also been referred to the Homelessness and Poverty Committee. Okay. Okay. okay right. Yes, you want to open yeah. it, Mr. Bonner? Uh, and it may take me less time to explain it than it did to read the agenda item. <laughs> uh, so, uh, colleagues, this is actually a pretty cool thing. Um, for decades, we've had our vets sleeping under our bridges and our parks and our sidewalks all while there were nearly uh, 400 acres of land in the west side deeded specifically for veterans that was being used for a lot of different stuff except for homeless veterans. And uh, the VA uh, got sued uh, and towards the end of the Obama administration agreed to start doing stuff. And they are completing their master plan which uh, looks like it will put 1,200 units of permanent supportive housing for vets on that campus. Uh, through Triple H money, we've helped the first two buildings, which is a rehab of those there, uh, and the VA started doing safe parking. Uh, and when the mayor announced uh, his bridge housing program, the VA uh, started conversations with uh, my office and Supervisor Kuehl's office and the CAO's office and said they would be interested in, in doing uh, a, a version of bridge housing uh, on, their, on their property. And... Uh, the city and the county and uh, the feds are all pretty on board. And there's a, 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 a tight timeline for it because they're proceeding with the environmental documents on their master plan. Uh, and uh, they don't want this to get in the way of that. Uh, they also have funding that can be used for the programming there. And if they don't start spending it by the beginning of next year, then they lose it. So. Uh, uh, we need to, uh, with the county, lock in uh, our funding so they can begin to purchase the trailers. Um, uh, just an explanation on how this is a little bit different and at the same time similar to the bridge housing in the rest of the city is uh, the bridge housing that we all have in our districts is specific to a geographic population. This, because it's VA property, is specific to veterans. So this will, uh, while it'll certainly do outreach to some of the veterans who live in the shadow of the VA, it'll uh, be available to veterans from around the city and will likely serve veterans from the various server service provider areas. 
So uh, someone may ask, well, why isn't Bonin using his CD11 share of the bridge funds for this? Uh, and that's because this isn't the CD11 bridge. Uh, we have one proposed that's in design and we'll begin hopefully sequel analysis soon after a town hall meeting the mayor and I are doing. Uh, and this is city, will benefit citywide. So we're, what we're looking to do is um, uh, eventually use the, the heap money when it comes in, but in case it doesn't come in fast enough, we want to be able to tap into to the UB and then have the heap money reimburse. Did I do okay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, the only thing I would add is that um, since the CEQA funding was, sorry. or the CEQA, sorry, the CEQA Meg notice. Introduce yourself for the oh, sorry, Meg Barclay, City Homeless Coordinator um, in the Office of the City Administrative Officer. The only thing I would add is that since the CEQA analysis was added to the file after the motion was introduced, which goes to how quickly um, the project is needing to move, um, we would just ask that you determine that the project to use the West Los Angeles campus site of the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs as a bridge housing facility is categorically exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act pursuant to Article 19, Sections 15301, Class 1H, 15302, Class 3C, 15304, Class 4ABE, as well as the City of Los Angeles CEQA Guidelines, Article 3, Section 1, Class 1812, and class 136 as set forth in the notice of exemption attached to the council file <laughs> at the request of the city attorney. Okay. So I don't think this council usually makes secret determination. Uh, this committee usually makes secret determinations. Um, and I know this is still set for homelessness and poverty. Could, I don't know if they're suited to do it as well. As long as that's the, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, so, okay. <laughs> uh, yes, I, uh, council member, uh, the, the, I think the, what we're uh, proposing is just making a recommendation, uh, just a recommendation action, and that this uh, secret determination was supposed to accompany the notice of exemption that's on file already. Okay. And so we think we're just trying to um, sort of button down the file, make sure that's before. Uh, both this committee and the Home Business Committee and Mithville Council. Okay. So um, let me say, first of all, um, congratulations, Mr. Bonner. Um, and I agree with you. This is going to be of great benefit to, I think, folks throughout the city and not just in CD11. Um, what I'd like to have, because we've, we're starting to have um, appropriation requests mm -hmm. coming in, and um, my concern is that if we're doing them without a comprehensive view of what our sum total of projects is going to be, mm -hmm. uh, I get first come, first served, and there's some advantage to that in encouraging people to get moving. Um, but I think it's important for this committee to also understand as we go forward, you know, what are all the future projects that we are, are going to be considering? What's the status of the UB accounts? Um, what would be the, pro the cost projections or the appropriation projections for the projects that we're anticipating that are sort of in the pipeline? Um, I, I, I get concerned. With, it's like when, you know, the voters pass initiatives and every initiative sounds like a really good expenditure of money except when it's compared to other priorities. And right. so I just don't want us to fall into that trap. Um, so as, as each of these proposals for appropriation comes before the committee, I'd like to have the CAO report on, you know, what are the remaining future projects anticipated, um, what's the status of the cash available in the UB accounts um, from which these appropriations will be drawn, and, and mm -hmm. that sort of information that will help us to make informed decisions about Right. Priority, cost effectiveness, and so on. Yes. Um, that being said, I, I don't want to hold this up at all. And it is set for the policy committee on tu Tuesday, Wednesday. next week. Uh, Wednesday. Oh, this, tomorrow. Yeah, two days from uh, now. Two days from Wednesday. 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 Okay, so um, usually the policy committee considers these things before we get them. So we've heard this now. Mm -hmm. um, what I'd like to do is um, hold this in committee allow Housing and Poverty to, to make their, uh, do what they're going to do on Wednesday. And then, unless there's some dramatic change, which I don't anticipate on Wednesday, then we'll just waive it 
uh, out of this committee. So that way they get the first policy consideration of it. And, um, you know, I, I'm satisfied for myself, mm. speaking for myself, and I think it sounds like Mr. Bloom. We haven't gotten to Mr. Bloomfield yet. We will. But it sounds like in terms of the expenditures here, um, I'm perfectly content with them. Unless those change in some way, I would just wave it out. So, Mr. So Bloomfield, any comments on this one? Uh, I mean, really an echo of what you're saying. I mean, obviously, great project. It serves the whole city. I get that. Uh, but I'm also worried that all the projects are doubling their projections and we only have so much money and how do we, how do we balance all of that? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so uh, in, in response to that, and I apologize, I had, I had gotten some questions about the UB before and I, had met, I brought uh, with me the two, the two allocations to date that have been expressly approved from the UB account are, were um, funds to the Bureau of Engineering for pre-development costs for bridge home sites at $2.27 million and funding to expand the pit stop program in the Skid Row and downtown area in CD14, which was $420,000. So that's about $2.7 million so far that specifically um, being has been expressly allocated or appropriated from the unappropriated balance. There are a number of projects similar to the VA campus where the UB has been identified as a source if the HEAP money um, the state homeless emergency aid program funding isn't approved and available at the time that these that funding is needed to move the projects forward, and that's really in an effort to make sure that um, projects can move. Um, and we have authority in those motions or council actions to use the heap money instead if it's available at that time, which is what we would what we would do. And we're uh, working out a process with the controller for that. Um, the other thing we can look at even for those BOE pre-development costs is see um, once we have um, the projects approved, especially with funding from um, the projects that are going to be funded from the GCP, such as Schrader, for example, look at any funds that were um, allocated from the UB, maybe where it would, might be able to reappropriate from that 2.27, be able to um, swap expenditures as we move forward. Um, we're looking at, at ways to do that to make sure that we're preserving that funding source as much as possible. Uh, once the HEAP money is approved, and um, actually, I, I think we've reported this here, I'm not entirely sure, but we have heard from the state that once they approve our application and we have a grant agreement, that the full amount of the $85 million that is the city's share of that grant will be um, transferred to the city and available for expenditure all at once. And so that this that will save, solve a lot of, we'll, we'll have a bigger yes. source of funds to go to um, that won't impact this, the unappropriated balance. And we'll be able to bring forward those uh, balances as, as any of these other motions go forward. That will be a welcome day. Mm -hmm. It's, I just wanted to, just to manage expectations though around the projects that are in the pipeline, we definitely know which projects have motions. The thing is that we don't really know what the cost of those projects will be until, as soon as basically once we know what the cost of those projects costs of those projects will be that's when the you know the request to appropriate the funds happens because it's um, you know because of the the way that the feasibility studies go and once we have the design we know the cost and that's when we're ready to move as soon as the CEQA is done and so no we don't know what that um, won't necessarily know as far as the projects that are in the pipeline for motions until we know that they're they're ready to go at which point that's where that request for the appropriation would be made and so um, mm. the the pipeline is more of a list of motions that have been introduced and in sites as opposed to costs mm. associated with them on a real comprehensive level just because of the way that we're trying to move these projects quickly yeah okay anything else Congratulations. Uh, without objection, it'll be the action of the committee to hold this item in committee uh, pending uh, consideration of the Homelessness and Poverty Committee later this week. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other business before the committee? Uh, no, sir. That clears the desk. Seeing none, um, we are adjourned.